Once your data is prepared, you can begin to make sense of it and develop insights about its meaning. For many, this is where the data analysis process becomes the most fulfilling. This is the point where you get to reap what you've sown in the previous phases of the data analysis lifecycle. This section will have three chapters. First, summary statistics. Summary statistics are usually where one starts from beginning to develop insights. The second chapter is regression. Regression is a common statistical technique employed by many to make generalizations as well as predictions about data. The final chapter is plotting. This chapter will cover the basics of creating plots in R. It'll, it will begin by demonstrating the plot, plotting capabilities available in R out of the box. You will also be given resources to learn more about ggplot2, which is one of the most common plotting libraries in R. Like previously mentioned, summary statistics, otherwise known as descriptive statistics, are usually where one starts from beginning to develop, to develop insights. You may also hear the phrase exploratory data analysis, sometimes abbreviated as EDA throughout your career. This is the point where you try to get a high level understanding of the distributions and relationships within your data set. This chapter will go over how to develop summary statistics for both quantitative as well as qualitative data. Let's begin with quantitative data. When dealing with continuous data, one of the quickest ways to get a high level view of your data is by using the summary function. This function will return your extreme or your minimum and maximum values, your median, your mean, as well as the first quantile and third quantile. So let's try that out on the MT cars data set. So we can see for the miles per gallon column, the minimum value is 10.4. Here's the first quartile, the median, mean, third quartile, and max. Alternatively, you can use the following eight functions to retrieve specific information about your data. So first we've got mean, median, standard deviation, and these three should look familiar to you. And then we can do var, which will return the sample variance. And then we can also do min and max. Here's max. And then we can do range, which will return the minimum and the maximum value. And then quantile. So let's run each of these individually to see what they look like. So mean, that will give us the average, median, we got the median, and this lines up with the previous results. Standard deviation, which you should be familiar with from the previous lessons, sample variance, min, max, and you'll notice those two line up. Range, which gives us the min and the max, and then quantile. Next, we'll review qualitative data. So if you're working with data that is categorical and encoded as a factor, you can view all categories by using the levels function. So we'll do that on the iris data set on, and on the species column. So if we run that, we get the levels of that column or all the distinct values. However, if you want to count the number of occurrences for each level, you could use the table function. So now instead of just returning the names of each of the distinct species, we get the names along with how many times each species occurs within the data set. 